Welcome to the next episode, everybody. This is that famous series, and I'm finally ready to kick off since we got the Kevlar boat up and running. And as you can imagine, I'm ready for the next project. Do you remember this? Remember what was underneath here? Let's see, hopefully it's still there. Oh yes, a little bit of garbage there. But yeah, that's a 400 horsepower, 351 Windsor, configured for marine application. Never been started. We'll pull the dipstick here in a little bit and I'll show you. But belts are intact, everything, water separators there. Now, one thing to note here is you see down there where that little blue tab is. Little, it's a, I guess I forgot we refer to that as. It's what blocks off where the mechanical fuel pump goes. Anyway, we are going to get a real marine grade fuel pump to put on here. If you look over there, basically to the left of where those terminals are hanging off of, you can see there's a, looks like a fuel, electric fuel pump relay. And I'll tell you what, I am not about to start diagnosing all those wires to figure out how to make this electronic fuel pump work. So we are gonna go back to the basics. We are gonna put on a mechanical fuel pump and we're gonna get this guy started. Let's go ahead and take a little walk around the back here before we even think about starting this. You can see this alignment tool has seen better days. And I can't even tell you how long that's been in there for. It's actually not rusted inwards, so that's good. Take a look at this. I've got a replacement one in here. Let's just take a look before we go any further here. And last time I remember, I believe this gimbal bearing is in pretty good shape. All right, let's check, let's check the alignment here. So this is kind of interesting. The alignment isn't, it's not bad, but you gotta remember this boat, I believe it hasn't been on the water in about, I don't know, it's been, been about four years, I believe. So this type of settling on a new, um, new floor install and, you know, the engine mounts and everything, not surprising. I would imagine your gimbal bearing is going to wear out pretty quick if you don't adjust the alignment on this. So I think what we're going to do is I'm going to go adjust the uh, front. I'll show you what I mean here. And you can see right about there, you need a, a second person. I've got a video on how to do engine alignment. So if you want to see more in depth on how I plan on doing this, just throw a comment in the comments field and I'll show you how we do engine alignment. But I wanna to try to get this engine aligned first before we uh, put the stern drive on it. One thing to mention here is we technically could start this up without the stern drive on. And in some ways, maybe it's not a bad idea to do that. There's a little water line about right there. You can hook up to a hose and water would then be uh, pushed into the motor through that little black hose right there. Hopefully I'm pointing at the right piece, but could do it that way if needed. I'm kind of on the fence on which way I wanna take this. If I wanna put the stern drive on and then um, start it up. So we'll see. Here's the stern drive, OMC Cobra. This one's already been rebuilt but it's been sitting for a little bit. So I'm not really too worried about the seals in the lower unit here. I think they're fine. You can see we've even had the filter replaced on it. One thing I think we talked about in a prior episode is these zincs here. And there's also one down here in the lower unit. It needs to get swapped out, but we're not gonna worry about the one in the barrier, uh, the bearing carrier yet. We're just gonna go after this guy and that one as well. Now, let's also look here. You can see 
we've got an issue with the gaskets and then the shaft here all in all is kind of rusted. So we're gonna treat it with some phosphoric acid. We, we've got some um, Zerks too on these differentials, or uh, U-joints rather. You can see one right there as, as well. So we're gonna need to clean this up and then you can see the ceiling surface is all kinds of nasty. And then we'll need to make sure the uh, gear shifter goes up and down properly as well. So we'll double check that, but we need to make sure we've got all the right seals before we even try to install this because we need to treat this thing. Um, otherwise we're gonna be pulling it off pretty quick. And then I'll double check on the, the oil in here. I think this is dry. I believe it is, but I can't be 100% sure. So we'll have to double check that as well. So anyway, let's go ahead and take this guy. Let's set it on its side on my work table and let's start working on this. Cause you know, like I said, we've got a lot of prep that we need to do before we can install this. And if you've seen that, uh, my video on the do not remove plug, that's what that is. So if you're wondering, uh, definitely don't ever remove that. It's a pain if you do. I've got a video if you if you end up making that mistake. So anyway, let's go ahead and put this on the table and um, go to the next step. Here. Let's go ahead and take some of our super clean first and foremost. This thing has been sitting for I don't even know how long, and it is in just absolutely terrible shape. So we're gonna sit there and see if we can degrease all the internals and all that fun stuff. And then just uh, make sure when you spray this, be careful around plastics. You don't want to cause any issues with your paint. All right, go ahead and let that sit for about maybe five, 10 seconds and let's go ahead and spray it off. What do you think? All I did was hit it with some super clean. I used the foaming action and then the, uh, the other one on the right to kind of get in there. And uh, I'll tell you what, it has really brought out the original uh, paint here, which you can see needs a little bit of work. And I think we're gonna probably coat it before putting it back on the boat, just so, you know, so we can be as thorough as possible and keep this thing, um, you know, looking good for the next season here. On that note, probably gonna get rid of this zinc. I'm pretty sure this is zinc and not magnesium. Here in the Great Lakes, uh, we need aluminum and not this type of anode. So we're gonna remove that one and then this one as well. And like I said, there's there's one in the barrier. Um, the, I keep saying that wrong. The bearing carrier here, but um, we'll get to that another time. But yeah, all in all, I think we're good on this one. I'm gonna use this guy. It's not brass and it's not metal. It's like a nylon. And I'm gonna use that to clean up the surface here. Came out pretty good. I think I'm gonna coat this with a, probably a brand new coat of epoxy, nothing crazy. I know there's some scratches towards the uh, skeg area. So we're not, you know, obviously looking for perfection, but you know what, this is like the best time anyway, since we just cleaned the surface here with that uh, nylon brush. So, you know, why not slap on a, a new coat of paint on it? It is empty by the way, there isn't any uh, gear oil in there, but you can see the uh, surface there is looking pretty good. I do need to get some uh, phosphoric acid to take some of this rust off here and then pop off that other O-ring because um, that's definitely no good. And these U-joints um, need to be greased up. We'll get to that. Then here's the old Vinks. You can see these are definitely original for sure. And they're, from what I can see, it doesn't look like they're aluminum. There's an A on a, on that one, but I'll tell you what, if you've ever picked up aluminum compared to zinc, this there's just no way that that is uh, aluminum. Anyway, so this is looking good. We're gonna let this dry and then tomorrow we'll come back and uh, put a coat of paint on it. And um, trim tab, I lined that one back up. It was off a little bit, but otherwise I think this is good to go. And uh, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get this engine alignment looking good because otherwise, when you go to put that shaft in there, if this isn't perfectly aligned, it will be a complete nightmare. Which reminds me, it looks like we also need to clean up this seal too. 
this whole ceiling surface is uh, a little dirty to say the least. So we'll go ahead and uh, clean the surface up too. It looks like the, um, the transom mount itself looks like it's in pretty good shape. We've got a little bit of that uh, sealant on here. We need to clean that off. We got all kinds of random stuff. The exhaust bellows look like they're all right. I don't think they're cracked or anything. And uh, this bellow in here is holding a little bit of something in there. So I'll need to check that out. I doubt that is um, uh, bad, but you never know. And then, yeah, I think um, we'll be off to the races here soon enough. This surface doesn't look as bad as the, uh, the one on the actual stern drive itself. So we should be able to clean this one up pretty quick. Uh, anyway, let's go ahead and get to that. Super clean to the rescue. Surface is looking good. Sprayed it with a hose and went over it with my wire brush. And you can see all the critical surfaces are good. May touch this up with some paint as well. You know, we want to keep it looking halfway decent, right? Let's take a look here as we're getting into this project a little bit more. I'll tell you what, it is definitely really dusty. That's what I was talking about earlier. See all the wires? It's, I'm not really sure what's going on there, to be honest with you. Very, very confusing. So on the far right, that looks like a fuel relay. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove that. I believe it or not, these batteries have 2017 markings on them. What is that? March, 2017. And they are still good. I charged them all the way up to 100%, and they are they are in good shape. Let's take a look at these belts. Belts are actually still good. There's that plate I was talking about. We're gonna take this off and actually put a mechanical fuel pump, and then we'll need to. This is the um, electric fuel pump. We're gonna get rid of that and then tie this guy into the mechanical fuel pump and then we can start talking about turning this thing on here otherwise everything else looks like it's pretty good we got like whatever this is let's throw that out start working on cleaning this thing up and then we've got this wire hardness of sorts i don't know what all this does but we'll figure it out I think this is the uh, the depth finder. All right. Yeah. Otherwise, the wires look like they're in pretty good shape. We've got some basic things we need to do, and we talked a little bit about this earlier. Is the um, we need to adjust the mounts. I believe, if I remember right, what we do with these are we raise them up to get the alignment. Best to do it with two people. Otherwise you could be going in the wrong direction, spending a lot of time um, going in the wrong direction here. So you can also see we've got part of the exhaust off and talked about that in the Kevlar boat video, why it's missing, but we've got another one we're going to put in for the time being. And we've got to adjust this little guy. I've got a whole, uh, I think it's a five point, um, five part video series on this. Shows how to work that. But yeah, otherwise this motor looks like it's pretty good. Let's take a look at this oil here. Look at that. It doesn't even look like it has oil on it. See the sheen? Yeah. Like I said, everybody, this is a brand new motor. Never been turned on. And internal, all that stuff's been rebuilt. Doesn't have a single hour on it. So we're gonna have some fun with this guy. I can tell you that. Looks like we got the uh, remnants of a stereo system under there as well. Looks like it's in decent shape. So anyway, I hope you like the uh, intro here of the video. It's not really an intro. I think this is technically part two. 
but we're going full force on this. If you like the series, hit that like button. We've got a lot more videos that we're gonna do with this. I mean, we need to still clean up the floor. You can see all the carpet's been removed. And we got the speakers. We gotta look at this uh, gauge cluster, see what's going on there. And then obviously we need to get some seats in here. So I would like to get this motor started sooner rather than later, but we're gonna be needing that mechanical fuel pump to make this happen. So anyway, go ahead and smash that like button. We'll catch you on the next episode, everybody. Have a good one. Take it easy.